Hello, John from Peter Tyson. You asked for it, let's just crack on. First of all, do you have one of these speakers that are in the video? Why not let others know what you think down in the comments? I like it when you all start conversations going. For the source equipment, I'll be using a Cyrus Classic Stream connected to a Cyrus Classic amp. Good solid British hi-fi. It's pretty neutral sounding, so it should give us a good test bed. I know the electronics cost more than all of these speakers, but I think as a general rule, that's not a bad thing to do. First up, the Wharfdale Linton, a modern version of a British icon from the mid 60s to late 70s. The original Lintons were very much of their time. Big cabinets, big drivers and big sound, very much suited to the music of that era. And they are very much made with modern materials using modern methods, but still retaining a little bit of retro charm. They are by far the largest speakers in this test. A three-way dual rear-ported bass reflex speaker with a one-inch soft dome tweeter, a five-inch black woven Kevlar mid-range, an eight-inch black woven Kevlar bass driver. They're an absolute delight to listen to. Treat them to some good quality electronics and they'll reward you to big, open, expansive sound and effortless low frequency response. They do work better in mid to larger size rooms, give them a bit of space and try and pull them away from walls, keep them well away from corners. They can overpower small rooms quite easily due to their size and the retro styling won't be for everybody, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. They handle transients beautifully and I'd happily sit and listen to Dark Side of the Moon in its entirety using these speakers. And that is the ultimate compliment as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the Bowers and Wilkins 706 S3. No speaker shortlist should be complete without an appearance from British manufacturer Bowers and Wilkins. Regardless of price point, they are always hugely enjoyable and have consistently flawless build quality. The B&W 706 S3 is a two-way loudspeaker with a one-inch decoupled carbon dome tweeter and the distinctive B&W 6.5-inch continuum cone mid-bass. It's a bass reflex design with B&W's flow port exiting the rear of the cabinet, covered in dimples like a golf ball to reduce air friction and provide a cleaner low end. That is the B&W sound all over, clean and uncoloured. The integration of drivers and exceptional timing makes them lively and engaging with super tight bass. It's the kind of speaker you're likely to keep for a very long time, they're easy to place and easy to partner with electronics and a huge amount of fun. The KEF R3 Meta, the most outlandish styling and of course that trademark UniQ drive unit again from British manufacturer KEF. I've been very honest in the last two speaker comparison videos that I am personally am not a huge fan of the UniQ driver so far. Each to their own, everybody's different. And the KEF gets a huge huge amount of praise from reviewers, so I know that they have a big following. That being said, the R3 Meta are a full three-way design, and that's really impressive achievement for a stand mounter of this size when you compare them to the footprint of the earlier Wharfdales. There's a one-inch aluminium dome tweeter with Meta material absorption technology that reduces unwanted sound from the back of the tweeter. That lives in the center of the five-inch aluminium mid-range UniQ driver. The base is delivered via a separate 6.5 inch hybrid aluminium cone. The additional base driver is hugely significant on the R3 Meta, so you get the detail and the analytical nature of that UniQ driver, but you actually get some decent controlled tangible base from that separate driver. It might not be the deepest base here, but it's very clean and controlled. Of all the KEF speakers that I've heard and tested here, the R3 Betas are actually my favourite ones. I actually don't dislike them. Regardless if you like the styling, you can't argue that the build and finish are absolutely spotless. Are they my favourite on this list? No. Should you give them an audition and give them a chance to see if you like them? Absolutely. The Sonus Faber Sonetto 2s. Sonus Faber, say. An elegant piece of furniture 
that fills the environment with its warm and enveloping voice. To be fair, I could just cut this bit right here and save myself some filming. With their beautiful artisan loot shaped cabinets and hand sewn leather tops, they are all about craftsmanship and emotion. Unmistakably Italian through and through. With a two way front ported base reflex design, a one inch damped Amex dome tweeter, and a six and a half inch custom cellulose pulp mid base driver. Are they the most accurate here? No. Are they the most detailed? No. Did I have the most fun with them? You're damn right I did. They are as described in the first sentence from Sonos Faber. Powerful, warm and enveloping. It's like getting an audible hug from your speakers. They make your music like an event. They are instantly lovable and you forget that you're listening to speakers. You just start tapping your foot and smiling and nodding your head and you're listening to your music. And really, that's what it's all about. And finally, the Dali Rubicon 2. Danish audiophile loudspeaker industries think that they have the perfect blend of small size and big sound with the Rubicon 2, and they are the smallest speakers on test here today. A two-way rear ported bass reflex design with a one inch fabric soft dome tweeter and that distinctive burgundy tinted six and a half inch wood fiber mid bass driver. Finish and build quality is outstanding. Don't let the conservative styling fool you, the Rubicons are bags full of fun. Like the Dalis that I covered in the other comparison videos, they sound bigger than they are with beautifully controlled bass and huge glorious soundstage. Exciting and punchy sound, Dalis never fail to make me smile. Treat them to good amplification and source equipment and you'll have a one more track kind of system that will give you lots of pleasure for many years. So a quick roundup for home cinema or super analytical monitor sort of sound, I'd perhaps lean towards the Kef. The retro charm and effortless power, it's got to be the Wharfdales. Maximum performance from a small speaker that's actually quite staggering, the Dalis win the day. Best looking and just sheer musical enjoyment, the Sonus Faber. The best all rounder, a mix of detail and accuracy while still having some excitement, the Bowers and Wilkins. So that's it. That's my roundup. What would yours be? If you think I've missed one out, leave it down in the comments below. If you'd like to audition one of these systems, or indeed any system at all, come here to Carlisle and say hello to me, or visit our Newcastle branch. Phone ahead on one of these numbers and we'll get everything set up for you. Until then, you'll see me in the next video. Take care.